let's get this on first before I even start getting into it for real, for real. Yeah, liquid white, don't need much. Don't need much. We'll take a clean, dry two inch brush. Yeah, so let's get, we'll get it on, start talking. All right, so, nope. All right, well, so with painting, man, I've, I don't even, I don't even know what the fuck. I thought this was gonna be a quick one. There's too much going on. So we've covered the canvas with a thin layer of liquid white. So we're prepped and we're ready to go. <laughs> I love Bob. Let's begin blending these colors together. Ready to have some fun now. Let's do it. So what are we gonna make? What are we gonna do? We're gonna do sky, we're gonna do a mountain, we'll do some do some trees, some reflections, some land, big trees water and call it a day. All right, so with, with painting, man, I, I grew up watching Bob Ross. You know, I would sit in front of the TV for however long he was on and I would just watch him paint. It was just amazing to me how he would, in 30 minutes, just put together amazing masterpieces and uh, make it look so easy and like, just effortless. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Just don't worry about it. Learn how to use what happens. And the thing about it with, with, with Bob also, it's just, he was just so cool. Like, he didn't get excited. Only time he really got excited was when he was washing the brush. Give him a shake. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That was like his favorite part. Just beat the devil out of it. I can't beat the devil out of the brush because this shit will go everywhere and the paint will go everywhere and my space is not conducive to everywhere type of splatters. So I have to be a little more reserved with my brush cleaning. Beat the devil out of it. A little, beat a little bit of the devil out of it. All right. The other cool thing. It's gonna blend this in a little bit. Uh, about watching Bob, man. It's like it would look like he has a fully like the painting is done. It's dope. And then at the last second, he would just be like, blop, and just a a glob of paint over the mountain or, or just something somewhere random, right? I'd be like, Bob, what are you doing? It's, it's done, it's, it's great, you done messed it up. And then he's just like, I just wanted to put a tree here. I think everybody needs a friend, so we're gonna give him one right here. Right? A minute later, it's just like, wow. Like, this stuff just unfolds before your eyes, like, it, I, Thought it was the coolest thing ever and so ever since then i always wanted to paint like that but never really even tried i realized that on netflix they had put uh bob ross's some of his the seasons of his show on netflix and it was like the greatest thing for me because i was going through some stuff at the time and i binged it for like a week i'd wake up before practice i'd watch it i'd fall asleep to it at night and and for hours i would just take in hours and hours of 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 the show until one day I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give it a try. So I went out, got all the, the, the paint I could get and the, the brushes and you know, I, I just followed one of his shows, one of his episodes and ever since then I stuck with it. I soon found out how awesome it felt, made me feel afterwards. I felt accomplished. I mean, it didn't look great, but it was a great feeling to have done it. When my kids left in 2015, I was trying to find any way to cope with it. A lot of the ways were unhealthy. So 
I just decided let's just give it a try and see what happens. If Bob does this and he's as cool as he is, calm and zen-like, I needed some zen in my life. So I jumped into painting. But as much as I love painting, I'd have to say working out is really the one. But I never really was conscious of my body until someone complimented me in college. Pretty much from there, I was like, okay, people actually are looking at this. Even then, I wasn't really into lifting unless it was required. If it wasn't required, I wasn't doing it. But really that was because that's when I was just starting to learn about weight. And being that I wasn't used to lifting, I didn't know how to lift. I ended up breaking my back pretty much. I fractured a, a lower disc. So basically from that point on, my relationship with working out was on a need to do basis because F hurting my back again. Oh, hell no. But what happened was one day I just turned on Netflix. I was flicking through and I, I saw this movie called Pumping Iron starring uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it was amazing. It was pretty much following the journey, Arnold's journey and a few other bodybuilders. And I thought, I wonder if I can get my body to like transform like that. Not to be a bodybuilder, not to be that big, but to be someone who builds their body, who sculpts it and manipulates their body the way they want. I was curious to see if I can build it. So I went out and tried. I went out, I, I got a membership at the local gym and I pretty much haven't looked back since. Eventually working out became like a drug and I don't even feel right you know, when I'm not working out, especially on days where I know I'm supposed to rest. But if I'm not painting away my stress or working out the frustrations, I'm most likely on my bike. First time I rode, I was on the back of a friend's dad's bike. I had to be about 10 years old and I was terrified because there were no doors. And I was thinking, this does not feel safe. And we were only going like 30 miles per hour. So I talked about it in one of my recent videos. I watched a movie called Raising Arizona. And when I tell you, when I saw that dude shoot the lizard from the bike <laughs> what i was like man this is the coolest thing ever <laughs> like since then basically i just thought people who rode were like to me just the coolest people like it was the coolest thing if you're a rider and I always wanted to be like have that kind of cool because I've always felt like I was the opposite of that but that's for another episode and a call with my therapist okay but whether it's riding working out this as much as I really do enjoy doing all of them they've really become therapy for me, right? So with painting, I can use that for creative expression, right? And that's freeing. But with this, I can use force to purge my demons, right? Or release endorphins that make me feel good when I'm terrorizing my body. And that's cool at times, like being able to use force and physical strength to handle stress or with painting, you know, using finesse and a more zen approach. With writing, it's more flow and more focus, which allows me to stay in the moment, which allows me to not think about the things that might be bothering me. Which then allows my mind to recover from the added stress that I usually put on myself. I usually paint when I have time and when my place isn't cluttered. I mean, there's a lot of clutter when it comes to painting, for me at least. <sighs> With working out, I know I need to often, so I schedule it about five or six times a week. With writing, I kind of need the perfect storm. I need the weather to be right. My energy needs to be at a certain level. The bike needs to be prepped. Traffic has to be decent. So how can you find your outlets if you haven't found any? 
You have to try stuff out. <sighs> you might find out it's not for you. It's like I tell my sons, you can't know you don't like broccoli if you've never tried it. But yeah, you might try something that just doesn't work out for you. Or you might find something that you can't do without, even if it pushes you mentally and physically. It should be something that makes you feel good when you're done. Like working out. Like working out. <laughs> I can't beat the devil out of it like Bob did. This is what I'm, this is what I'm cleaning my brushes in. We're good to go. That's it.